So it's not about how much you fund. It's really about how much you can collect. So whether you're a funder or whatever institution you're working for, you want to stick around for this video. So my guest today works for Kearns, Brennan, and Monahan. He is Brennan Lefebvre. He's the marketing and operations director uh, for the company. Brennan, I appreciate you being on. Yeah, thanks for having me, Shane. I'm uh, super excited to be here to uh, talk to you guys about recovery for the future and uh, kind of what we're expecting to see. Good, good. Yeah, and and so some of those topics, and additionally to what you were mentioning, um, are also, we're going to talk about recession planning. Hopefully it doesn't hit too hard, but um, uh, some bad actors, you know, bad actors in the collection world, and also recruiting and retention in 2022. So let's get right into it. Let's talk about, you know, um, the recession possibilities, the planning and what you guys are doing. Sure. So um, it's it's kind of a service that we've been offering with our clients a little bit. Um, everyone's kind of been freaked out. If you turn on the news at any point, you see it just flashing headlines all over the place. Um, and it's just kind of got everyone like a little bit uh, on edge. Uh, we, we saw the emergence really of the MCA industry after the 2008 recession. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how it responds now. Um, but it really is just kind of making sure that your paper is going to be prepared to be collectible at the end of the day, right? It's all about that rate of return. So um, the things that we're just kind of looking at is just constantly measuring a lot of your processes. Um, we're very much goal oriented here um, and we set a lot of these targets, mm -hmm. uh, but we have to make sure that they're uh, measurable as well. So it's just going to be a fact of, hey, well, you know, we need to keep it X amount for return here. What are the processes we're going to do to implement this return? Uh, whether that is, you know, verifying the information that you have when you are um, collecting information for these merchants mm -hmm. um, and making sure that it's up to date and accurate. That's that's a lot of the stuff that we see is, you know, we'll get old uh, old phone numbers, maybe not accurate social security numbers sometimes. And it, it can be uh, difficult to collect on that kind of paper because you don't even know who you're going after at that point. So um, it, it's just kind of keeping up to date with that information that will really be key for a lot of these companies. Got it. Got it. Makes sense. Is there other things that like when you're talking before someone becomes a client, are there other things that you can give them a tip uh, you know, on or is it once they're onboarded or how do you go about that? Um, yeah, I mean, we'll definitely talk with everybody, whatever, especially we're at events, um, you know, love being able to talk with people and kind of get them the comfort knowing that we understand their industry, not as, you know, we're, we're not the experts by any means, but because that's, you know, the funders themselves, but we get to see everything that happens on the back end and we get to see all the details of the accounts that have gone bad. So we like to give, you know, advice on that kind of, hey, these are the patterns that we're starting to notice, whether they're clients or not. Um, we're always open to talk with everybody. Got it. Great. Okay. okay let's, so let's segue into the the CFPB and, you know, the future of, of commercial collections. What can you tell me, you know, about that? So um, I was lucky enough to be able to go to the Alternative Finance Bar Association meeting in uh, this past June in New York City. Um, and there was a former insider there uh, with the CFPB who worked with Rohit Chopra. Um, and quote unquote said, he's, the, he's the, the president of the CFEB, correct? Yes. The director of the CFEB. Right. Got it. Um, and so quote unquote said commercial collections is in his crosshairs. Um, so that is something that has raised alarms for a lot of people. Um, mm -hmm. and it, it really is them wanting to extend the powers of the FDCPA over to commercial collections. That's been something that's been talked about for years and years on end, um, hmm. especially with the emergence of the pandemic and how it um, that has affected small businesses. Uh, and they don't understand or are getting a grasp from a lot of small businesses and lenders themselves on exactly how that's going to affect things, how that's going to affect credit terms, how it's really going to make people less risk adverse, because that rate of return, when you are following the CFPB to the absolute T mm -hmm. and people being more gun ho on attacking those who don't, um, it, it really is going to make people very much more shy about, hey, maybe 
uh, we'll cut back on or cut in different areas on our underwriting process. Um, so, it's, so that means that they would, sorry, to interrupt. That means that they would um, kind of fund less or be tighter on their restrictions on, on underwriting, yeah. underwriting. Yeah. And, and I mean, that's the great part about, you know, MCA, right? Sometimes it isn't the most, uh, credit qualified person, but it is such a great opportunity that they're not able to go through these banks and they're not able to, you know, secure this funding to be able to actually pursue the American dream that they've been, they've been hoping for. So with the CFBB, um, increasing those restrictions, we would be seeing a lot more of those tighter restrictions on, um, more so less money being put out on the street. Uh, those mm. people who had those dreams are no longer going to be able to pursue them, um, at least ideally. Right. And and just to backtrack for a second, the organization that you said, it was the FD, and what does that uh, more or less stand for? Uh, the FDCPA. Yeah. Um, yes, it's the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. Got gotcha. um, Yeah, enacted by Congress in the 1970s. Got it. All right. All right. Okay. So some possible big changes that could affect... Mm -hmm. not only just the MCA world, right? It's, it's mm -hmm. you know, loans, lines of credit, short-term financing, probably heavily more so than, than bank financing, right? Like traditional. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you know, the, the CFPB, even in an article I was reading on um, the uh, business wire yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, curl bond rating was saying that, um, you know, they, the CFPB is already sending signals uh, on alerts with MCA companies, mm. you know, they are very much aware of what's going on. Um, and they're taking deep dive looks into it. So it, it's not flying under the radar. It's very much under a microscope and they will make the bad apples. They will let a bad apple spoil the bunch for everybody. Right. Right. And that's big. Um, I mean, from state to state, I mean, you're seeing the laws being passed or at least being proposed, some failed, some, you know, have passed, mm -hmm. but okay. So, I mean, that kind of leads into a little bit about the bad actors. I mean, when you talk about bad apples, mm -hmm. bad actors in the collection world, what, what are your kind of either thoughts or where, or is it impacting you and your company in the industry? You know, the, the bad actors, it, it's frustrating because it leaves such a bad taste of collections in people's mouth. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they'll, they'll get with an agency who doesn't communicate with them, um, who uses hyper aggressive tactics to go after money, um, who uses deception and even to the point where some of them just don't even remit to their clients. Um, they'll close up shop, head out and it's, it's scary. Um, so th those agencies, we have seen a lot of them fall out of practice now, especially during the pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. there was a mass closures of a lot of different collection agencies during that time. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, so th th it really is just kind of falling on this line of being firm and fair. Um, we're not meant to be people's best friends, um, but we're also not your enemy. Uh, right. Like th there is a problem and we're trying to find a solution that works for them and our client. Uh, so going in there and trying to strong arm somebody yelling and screaming, that's not going to work. But at the same time, that rate of return and getting that money back into our clients' hands as quickly as possible mm -hmm. so they can you know, fund more deals, get more money out on the street, and potentially help more businesses, that's that's the most important part. So it, it really is kind of uh, the bad actors weed themselves out, um, but it makes finding a good agency just that much better. Got it. Okay. So then, you know, our last, uh, one of our last topics here, recruiting and retention in 2022, what, what are your, you know, kind of tips or what are you, what are you thinking for this year and, and even beyond if you. Sure. Yeah. This is something that we've been taking a lot more of a focus on here Okay. Um, because as a lot of people have been talking about recently, there's been so many jobs created, they say employment's at an all time high, but nobody can seem to hire anybody. It's it's kind of like this weird conundrum, right? It so. is. It's like a secret uh, formula. I mean, whenever they come up with like the jobs numbers, there's always some other thing. But this is only because so many people are on the sidelines or not. There's like, yeah, there's all kinds of things going on. But go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's 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 pretty funny. But we uh, what we've started doing is we've turned the interview process kind of upside down. Okay. Um, and it's using a strategy that we call reverse interviewing. Yeah. So what we'll do is whenever we bring in candidates, um, we try to make them as comfortable as possible. 
the traditional way of doing things has always been, you know, sitting across the table from somebody in almost like an interrogative format. And that brings on this high level of pressure that nobody seems to really want to operate under. Um, and it's it's been tradition, but it, it's almost outdated at this point. So we try and make people as comfortable as possible with um, with having these conversations with us and then bringing the best out in that conversation, finding topics that they know a lot about because nobody went to school to be a debt collector. Um, right, right. And so when, when we get them comfortable with something that they talk about, we're able to relate that and find the commonalities there and then make them kind of translate that into collections or translate that into sales, whatever, you know, role they're trying to fill here. Um, and we've seen awesome retention from those people that we brought on. Funny enough, we just moved into a new office because we're bringing on more people hmm. and we, we need the staff to be able to hold the clients, uh, client base that we have. Oh, well, that's great. Okay. All right. So you guys are moving it off a new office and you're hiring more people. Um, is that, uh, I mean, do you, do you have a kind of an awareness of that's a typical thing in a economic cycle like this, that you're going to see more clients, more, you know, debt that needs to be recovered. Is that kind of the cycle? You know, this is my first recession being in collections. Okay. Um, so this would be something that I would love to kind of learn more about and understand to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. But my initial feeling from going into it and from talking with people around here who have been in collections for a long time, um, yes, we will see more placements, but the collectability of them is always the question, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're, they're being placed for a reason. And it's, it, this is why we're stressing with our clients. Look, you gotta, you gotta look at the terms that you're putting with these people. Um, if they are 90 days past due, maybe, and they're, you're not seeing that return that you want, maybe just start looking at 60 um, because days and debt matter so much. It doesn't age like fine wine. Right. Um, so it, it really does kind of come down to, okay, well, what can we help our clients with to have this better return? But especially when we're onboarding new clients and we get some of these people who are placing accounts that are maybe even like six months to a year to a year plus, it, it can be scary. Um, but it's, it really is just kind of adjusting with the time in terms of the economic cycle. Okay. All right. And then to just kind of wrap it up, um, what else, you know, tell me more about what other products or what products you guys do do. And then anything else about, uh, you know, KBM um, before we head out. Yeah. I mean, we've been around for uh, coming up on 18 years now. Um, so we've had a full A to Z service from the beginning. Um, you know, we take everything from, pre-placement to uh, uh, credit reporting, helping people understand, hey, maybe if um, I am able to pull credit reports on their site, I can understand whether I want to do business with these people or not, um, all the way to third-party collections and then to the grave where it goes to legal servicing, where you know we're able to work in every single state, every single county. There's no issues with us there and even internationally. Um, so those are pretty much, that's the general services we offer. And then we, we will, you know, help clients out with special tasks whenever they need us to. Um, we're always involved with anything credit with our clients. Um, you know, and that's, that's been one of the nice parts about being part of the IACC and the CLLA, the International Association of Commercial Collectors and the Commercial Law League of America. Mm -hmm. um, we've been lucky enough to be one of the very few cross-certified agencies uh, because we've been able to provide these outstanding services for our clients. Um, so, Things on the horizon for us is really just kind of expanding into different markets and diversifying a lot um, mm -hmm. and then recruiting people from these different uh, with experiences in these different markets to help work on that paper, because it's important to have those collectors with that kind of knowledge. Got it. OK, well, I, I appreciate it, uh, you know, again, for you joining me, you know, it's been, you know, I think some good information here that uh, even I, you know, uh, have some more awareness of, of how these guys are going about and, and what's ahead. So, you know, really appreciate it again. And, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Thanks, Shane. All right, Brendan. Appreciate it. Thanks.